morning, folks. Woke up this morning thinking about working on the kids' fort. Well, we had about six inches of spring snow last night, so instead, probably still could work on it, but instead I'm gonna get some archery practice here. And uh, obviously I'm here in the garage and uh, I'm not gonna be working on any long range shots or really even aiming. Um, but you can work on a few other fundamentals and what I do here in the garage is in particular I work on a couple of things one is stance So I know I'm kind of outside of the shot here, but I need it for my target downrange here in the garage. I have My left foot I'm a right-handed shot. My left foot is Slightly open. I can show you here in a little bit. I actually draw some chalk around my boots but I always when I'm going through my shot progression here in the garage or even when I'm practicing on a range or in the backyard it's always stance stance is one get the feet set now this is not the archery practice that you would do for uh, scenario based things shooting off one knee with your right knee down, then your right knee uh, up, left knee down, left knee up, long holds, although you can do that in the garage. Um, those are scenario-based things that are really important as you get close to closer to hunting season. You can incorporate them anytime. I usually do them closer to hunting season. But um, these in the garage here are more for... They're more for just some certain kind of shot fundamentals. So stance is number one. Grip is number two. So if I were to face you and come here, you focus, you see the grip of my bow here. It's going to be on the thumb side of this line. You have a line that goes right down your hand Okay, it's going to be on the thumb side of that and you want to kind of sometimes wiggle your hands because what you don't want is a death grip. So I can even be kind of right here. Obviously, I'll grip a little bit tighter as I start with my shot, but that's my second thing. Obviously, there's all kinds of great archery videos online. You can take a look at those, but for some simple practice in your garage, stance, grip, Third thing is front shoulder. So I'll be looking at the target. I come here and from right there, I bring my front arm to the target. What I don't want is this. I don't want my shoulder creeping up into my ear. I want it down, okay? So you're gonna raise it up, but when you're pulling back your shoulder, you don't want it to creep up here. A lot of fatigue there, could be a lot of shaking as well. Third thing I'll think about sometimes, honestly not always, but just getting in the habit of pulling up to a level bow. So I'll check my level. And then the fourth thing is that I'm always thinking about is anchor and then pulling through the shot. Okay. So again, not really an archery tutorial, but this is some way to get a few reps in if you can't get outside or even if you just don't want to get outside. So in my head, stance, grip, front shoulder, pull it back, anchor on nose, anchor behind the ear, and then I'm going to pull through the shot. Okay, one more time. Although you can get one arrow, 10 arrows, 50 arrows, whatever you want. If it's in your garage, just walk downstairs, especially if you work from home. So I'm gonna look at feet grip, front shoulder, pull through, find my anchor, okay, level's good, now I'm just going to pull through the shot, and that's it. Again, you can get as much or as little practice as you want here, let me pull you around so you can see what I'm seeing, that's all I see. From here in the garage, there's nothing fancy about that whatsoever, but it gets the job done. And that is actually my boots. See how 
my left boot is open, slightly open. Right boot, I'm right-handed again, is more closed off. You know, I've been listening to this audio book on mastery, and I found the book from reading a blog post, and in that blog post, there was a quote by supposedly the founder or inventor of judo, and it said that on his deathbed, he wanted to be buried in his white belt, which is the belt of the beginner. And that could have been a sign of great humility, or it could have been a philosophical point that that uh, judoku master was trying to say that in any new endeavor, to make progress in that endeavor, indeed to reach mastery in that endeavor, you have to have the, the mindset of a white belt, which is your first belt. And at least for him, he was a master in many things. Of course, judo was one of them, but he was a beginner at death. Never had trained, never had any experience in death. So I've been thinking about that a lot, uh, related to many things in my life over the last few years. My family's life, uh, we'll probably do a, a recap video at some point in the last uh, few years, what we've been up to, but it's been a lot of learning and new things. Jiu-Jitsu, Judo, one of those. Uh, archery, obviously, in this video is one of those. Uh, hunting in the West, public land, homesteading, gardening, raising animals, homeschooling, those are all new things to us. And honestly, at times they can be incredibly frustrating because we are beginning so many new things. We're beginners at so many new things, which means we're not very good <laughs> at so many things. But it's helpful to know that even as you gain a little bit of experience, to still maintain the white belt mindset. That is, the mindset that you haven't arrived, you maybe you've made a little progress, but there's always more to go. There's always a new move to learn in jiu-jitsu. There's always better you can do archery, gardening, etc. Whatever your endeavor is, your relationship, your career. So I'll just leave you with that. Um, obviously, maybe you could tell from this video that I'm a white belt at archery, but I want to continue step by step, shot by shot, practice by practice to be on the path of mastery to make incremental improvements step by step and not to be discouraged by the seemingly slow pace. Just commit to the endeavor and commit to having a beginner's mind, a white belt mind, so that you can always learn and always advance.